Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Arnest. Nice I'm to so see glad you. to see you. I'm so glad you invited us to the Alice T. Colonial Collection, Minor Collection. And I'd like to introduce you to the oral history of our group. This is Mr. Bob Fitzgerald. How do you do? And uh, Mrs. Martinson, Alan Martinson. How do you do? And Joyce Lavoie. How do you do? And this is Mr. Martinson around the corner and Mr. Ed Charles. Hi, thank you. How do you do? We're very anxious to see this beautiful museum. It is a lovely place. You're not going to regret it. You're going to come back many, many, many more times. Now we'll start at the entrance of the hall. What was restored from 1919 to 1924, and everything in here is early American and Victorian. We have more history in this place, and, you, and I'm open from Tuesday to Saturday, every day from 10 to, 10 to 4. And I close during the month of January when I take my vacation. Notice the windows. That's your Redford glass, your bullseye thing. There's only a 20-year period they made that, from 1831 to 1851. The construction was done from 1919 to 1924, and the stone masons were imported from Italy, and the plasters were imported from England. And the people that worked on this house got dollar a day in 1990. <laughs> Are your Christian door, you have your cross and your open Bible on the bottom. Homes usually over 100 years old have a Christian door. On this wall we have Peaceable Kingdom by Edward Hicks. It's in all our social study books in fourth grade. Your Victorian tilt top table, and that's your early American, your birdcage. The piano is your early American square piano, but when they made furniture in the olden days they used two woods. That's rosewood and crotch mahogany. Let's notice the chair in the corner. That was for the people that, the men that wore swords so they could sit down. And the width of the windowsill, that's as thick as your walls are in this house, and the whole house is concrete, it's fireproof. In the corner, we return a little. Here we have the most beautiful break front, it's mahogany and walnut. It was built, built in 1790. And then when we'll move to the corner here, we have a chair that was President McKinley's favorite chair. It was given to the miners by his nephew. And all the light fixtures she purchased in Europe, except our library lamp, it came from the old Baptist church in Keysville. Here we have Washington Irving with his literary friends at Sunnyside. And below we have a Pennsylvania Dutch Bible box. She has quite a few Pennsylvania Dutch things in here. It dates back to 1705. But the Bible dates back to 1815. It belonged to Isaac Platt. On a wall here, we have the Staffordshire Bowls. The upper one is Lafayette Landing at Castle Garden, and the lower one is McDonough's Victory at Lake Champlain. This piece is Flemish. And in here we have sandwich glass, two shelves. It was made in Sandwich, Massachusetts, of course, in your cobalt blue. Now this table, Mrs. Minor purchased from Sephaniah Platt, and Plattsburgh was named after him. But this is just the center. Those two ends fit on either side. It's called your banquet table. Notice your Dutch Delft tile fireplace around the fireplace. Here we have an antique English tea caddy. And here we have the most beautiful corner cabinet with your butterfly shelves. It has your canton were made in China. Keppel white sideboard made around 1760. It's all inlaid with the wood. Mrs. Miner's grandfather, born in England, Mr. Saunders. Now this is beautiful. This is your cruet set for your condiments on the table. And on the wall we have lithographs of George and Martha Washington. We have a cross stitch here. Uh, which is 150 years old this year. It was done by eight, 1838 by Anna Weaver. And they were part of the, one of the families drummed along the Mohawk, the Weaver family. Then we'll turn around and look at the banjo clock. Here we have Benjamin Franklin at the Court of France, the part he played making the United States the nation. That's Marie Antoinette Louis the Sixteenth seated there. And on this wall, we have a letter written by William Penn in 1697, deploring slavery and the manufacture of rum. Now let's e enter the colonial kitchen. Floor, on the floor, we have the largest braided rug in the United States. It took a husband and wife two years to make it. It was made in a barn. 
and it is 24 by 22. Let's look at our table. It has china, it has pewter, and pewter is very popular right now. And in olden days, they made uh, pewter with lead, and they th think that's how Rome fell, because the people ate off of the pewter, and they died of lead poisoning. Then we'll turn around, and we have the antique Dutch milk cans. They just delivered milk in those in little wagons. They never carried them. They just poured out of those. And the cover held a pint. Pilgrim cradle with your wooden dowel, your Dutch oven, bed warmer resting against it. And I have all the cooking utensils. I show students that have food service how they cooked the meal in 1750. They did not have stoves. They cooked their whole meal in a fireplace. Then we'll go a little farther. We have your butter churn. Now, here we have history. These muskets were used in the Battle of Plattsburgh, which was 1812, and they had to carry these all day, plus their equipment, and, didn't, and they weren't too tall in those days. And your shot dispenser with your bullet mold, your cannonballs were found on the Lakeshore Road. Now here we have the weaving, we, weaving room. We have a linen chest. They didn't have linen closets in the olden days. We have a hand-knitted bedspread, knitted with store string. It's beautiful. And we'll turn around and we look on the walls, are all settlers done by young children. In the olden days, it was a requirement. They had to do them. They didn't have schools. And some children were only seven years old, and they'd, they'd date back to 1700 and something. Here we have a sugar loaf cutter which came out of the Hermitage, Andrew Jackson's home. In olden days, your sugar wasn't granulated. It came in big lumps, and they just would cut off as much as they needed. Then we'll turn around, and we'll look at the loom. That was made in 1700. Did you notice all your wood pegs? Came out of a home in West Chasey. In your early American cradle with your wooden dowel. Corn cradle, that's how they harvested their crops in olden days. The people worked too hard. That's why they died at early ages, too. They didn't see their children grow up. Our, our stairs are four-inch risers. You could afford to build this house in down days. Now we'll proceed up to the second floor. On this wall, we have a Dutch delf tile relief, but the work in the frame is burnt inside stencil. They had to heat their tool. They didn't have electricity in those days. That's beautiful. On this wall, we have Martha and George Washington, and this piano was made in England in 1804, and it has inlaid satin wood. And a piano was Mr. Broad with the maker, and he also made a piano for Beethoven. And this is, looks Grecian, but it's English. It's your Wedgwood Creamware, made in 1770. And on this wall, we have Martha and George Washington's courtship. He married her with her two children. Then we'll go a little farther. We'll see Abraham Lincoln's quill and his walking stick, Yorktown Surrender, Williamsburg. And this whole wall is Lafayette. George Washington made him a major general under his administration. He was only 21 years old. Now in the niches there, we have two letters written by George Washington. And those are the Lafayettes and it's French bisque. Her dress looks like real material. It's porcelain. That's about it. Notice the lights, they're alabaster. And then we're going to the dumb, this was a dumbwaiter in olden days, by the way. There's a beautiful doll collection in there, and the photograph on the table is a Russian couple. They made all the Russian dolls in there. Two dolls at the top with blacks. 
In this curio cabinet, we have two watch fobs that belong to Abraham Lincoln and your daguerreotype type of Abraham Lincoln and of, also of uh, Lafayette and George Washington. On the wall, we have all your old curio knives. And notice all the furniture in here, how miniature. Those pieces were salesman samples in the olden days. The, the man couldn't take the full scale in a buggy, so they made it to a small scale. They're called your salesman samples. And we'll turn around and we'll look at the bed. That was a little girl's bed, but in those days the children were smaller. They didn't have nutrition. It had a canopy at one time. In the corner we have a granddaughter clock made in England. This cradle, the wood in here, is butternut. On this wall we have two Russian icons and the sampler in the center was done by a 12 year old boy. Boys had to do them too, not just the girls. And we're going to t take a turn and we're going to look into the secretary. Here we have Irish bleak. It's still made to this day. But here we have the old Irish bleak. They stopped making this in 1922. It has a black printing on the bottom. The new has a green printing. But look at this basket. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, now we're going to turn around and look at the quilt on the bed, on the end of the bed. That's your sunburst pattern. When that quilt was made, they used 24 stitches to an inch. And all your silhouettes on the wall are real people. The lower one next to the bed is our third vice president, Aaron Burr, and the upper one is Empress of France, Eugenie. On the wall we have Mr. and Mrs. Minor. Mrs. Minor is responsible for this whole collection. She started in 1911. In 1924 when Mr. Minor had this house restored, she moved her collection in here and they never lived in the house. On this wall we have a Pennsylvania Dutch washing stand. It has a tree of life carved on the door. Oak wood, Latin Bible, St. Paul preaching, and this is St. Paul composing music. It was done in the 15th century. He's doing a response to a chorus. Now we'll turn around and we'll walk into the ballroom. We're on the third floor now. Here we have your, your sofa table. The historical things we'll mostly mention in here because we have over a thousand pieces of china in here. and We'd be in here for a couple days. Here we have King Edward on a plate, gave up the throne, he married the Duchess of Windsor. Cup and saucer of the reign of Queen Victoria, she reigned for 64 years. We have Robert Burns on a plate, our poet. Here we have Pennsylvania Dutch baking dishes. It's called your slipware. This piece of china was made during Abraham Lincoln's administration. It's a wine cooler. The balance of the set is at the Smithsonian Institute. We only have one piece. Your silver luster, your black wedgewood on the bottom shelf, your basaltware made around 1760. And this whole cabinet is copper luster made around 1830. On this top shelf we have your Bennington ware, which was Grandma Moses country. In Japanese China on the third shelf. Now this is all your red free glass, like the windows down there. The Redford glass was also made in Redford, New York, which is only a 20-year period. But did you notice the canes on the back wall? Those were your end of your day or your whimsy. When the men got through working at the end of the day, they had leavings left. They could make whatever they wanted to, and it belonged to them. Here we have Dresden teacups and plates given to the miners for a wedding gift, 1895. 
and they have never been used. And on the bottom shelf, we have two Majolica platters. We only have two pieces of gaudy Dutch in the home museum. The cup and saucer, they only made that from 1805 to 1812. This light fixture was taken from the old Baptist church in Keys was a gas light fixture. But notice close to the ceiling, the 12 apostles' heads are on the top. And all your furniture in this room is horsehair upholstery. They use the mane and tail in the olden days. It's durable, but picky. This is called your Oxbow Desk, made in Hingham, Massachusetts, right out of, out of Boston. This is your Chippendale. Whenever you see a ball and claw, that's Chippendale furniture. French clock. Here she has an all-glass slipper collection, your daisy and button pattern. And these were cheese jar covers in the olden days. The Duke of Wellington's on this one. This was a pound jar. Then we'll turn around. We'll see Queen Victoria. Ivory chest. On this wall we have a shell. The whole Lord's prayers on there. And in the corner is your European triptych. It's carved bone. It's a hunter's party. Your fender around the fireplace and your OG mirror. Now this cabinet, she has an all china slipper collection. There's 84 slippers in here. In the olden days when you went to a hostess, you brought the hostess a bottle of wine nowadays, but in the olden days they gave them a slipper, and this woman probably liked cats, so they placed the slipper in it. And then we'll turn around, and we, they had one untouched negative of Abraham Lincoln. They made it into a Staffordshire porcelain plaque. In other words, he had a look like that. The next piece is a fungus, goes on a tree. It was done by a woman in Peru, New York, that's over a hundred years old, but she was an artist. It was Mrs. Ida Mason. Your cricket cage. Now this picture frame tells a love story, and the picture's a watercolor. Spanish chest, your inlaid mother of pearl. Now we're coming to a beautiful piece here. This is a clock made in Virgen's Vermont in 1780, and Jordan Post was a maker. At that time, the day of the year appeared on the face of your clock. Now, this is beautiful. Here we have a marriage bed. Most of the people don't even, have never seen a marriage bed. In the olden days when they got married, the man would bring the wood for the foot of the bed and the wife had the headboard. And all your beds were rope beds. And so was your trundle bed. The trundle bed could slide under the bed. This was a Pompeii oil lamp. And on the wall we have three Shakespearean plays. This is called your Queen Anne High Boy. It was made in New York State in 1760. Now we're going to enter the Indian room from here. Here we have a mummified hand, foot, and bird before Christ. It's a woman's hand according to her inventory. We have Chinese nail guards next to the box, an Indian scalp. And these arrowheads and fish fossils were found in our area. It's called the Pointer Rush area. And then we turn around and she has three pieces from the walls of Pompeii. She would never get those nowadays. 1911 is a different story. And she has a money collection. Petrified frog, he turned to stone. Oh. Oh, 
On this wall we have an altar cloth made on a flower bag by the California Indians. This cabinet was a map cabinet, but in here she has all Indian relics and they're all identified. You have your hammer heads, your hatchet heads, your digging tools, your drilling tools. Go around the corner, we'll see her beautiful basket collection. They're popular right now. Everybody's collecting baskets. Collection, they were mostly made by the California Indians. But on this shelf, we have a knife, fork, and spoon made out of spikes. This ladle is made out of sheep horn. Here we have a peace pipe made out of catlinite found in Minnesota. Here we have a mortar and pestle in a corner from the Stone Age. And on the wall we have an Indian saddle bag. We have a christening dress and shoes and a little quilt made on a loom over 125 years ago. It was donated by people that never had children. It was worn by his grandmother. And they came one day with a stone pig. They noticed I didn't have a stone pig in this house. That was to keep your bed warm with hot water in the olden days. Uh-huh. This terrestrial globe was made in Nuremberg, Germany, 1804, and it's solid wood, and it still works like the day it was made. Here we have Abraham Lincoln and his family. On this table we have a lamp made out of a conch shell, and on this wall we have fans which she had framed at Tiffany's. And above it is your wool stump work, your bead work, and your needle point. Here's your bonnet dresser. In the olden days, women had bonnets, a long, deep drawer, but here we have one of her combs made out of tortoise shell. Your perfume bottles, your mustache cup, they also made them in left hand, and your shaving mirror on the dresser. Then we'll turn around, we'll look at the beds. These are called your cannonball beds. These are popular right now. But look at the quilts. They're your wild rose applique quilts, but the mattresses are horse hair. See how lumpy they look? And on this wall we have a shadow box made on feathers and pieces of material and the woman that made that mounted one butterfly in there. And those two people on the wall are Mr. and Mrs. Fisk. They built Dr. Clark's house and they changed the Ratter Road to the Fisk Road last summer going to West Chasey. On this table we have a Mr. Miner's pocket watch, 18 karat gold. And on this wall is a most beautiful handicraft. It was a picture and the woman dressed her. Here we have another beautiful cradle. And the quilt in the cradle is your, is your uh, ca uh, log cabin print. But those, that quilt was made just out of little pieces of silk ribbon. When you bought a cigar in the olden days, you got a little ribbon. That quilt was made out of little pieces of ribbon. And in here we have some of her jewelry. This was used to carry your calling card when you went to a function. Egyptian bracelet, two Mexican pesos. But you know what's beautiful about the whole house is your window sills. This is Staffordshire, and all your windows are 12 over 12. It makes it look colonial. On this wall, we have Wallace Nutting Prints. Now the last room when we enter it, I call Mr. Miner's memento room because everything in this room belonged to him. This was Mr. Miner's wardrobe. They didn't have closets in olden days. Look at this. You open it up. And in here we have his jacket. I call it a lounging jacket. But the quality of the material and the workmanship is beautiful. He died in 1930. This was one of his favorite jackets. And in here we have her wedding hat. She got married in a brown dress. She was a June bride. She wore 1895. They didn't wear white till after the century. And they only had one little baby. It only lived seven days. They never had any other children. 
Then Mr. Miner was brought up in this little farmhouse, on, which is called Miner Institute now. It was Heart's Delight Farm when he lived. His Aunt Hulda and Uncle John brought him up, and you'll see their pictures in his room. And he carved his name in a piece of barn board when he was 15 years old, and he was a mason. When he left this area, he didn't have money for college. He worked at a machine shop. I have all his tools. He's got his name on every tool. And the only education that man had was he got a degree in drafting, University of Minnesota. These are his drafting tools. But he must have loved Chasey as a child. He got his patent in 1892, and then he came back to Chasey. And this is the house you're in now. He purchased it from Ebenezer Scott, and Ebenezer Scott was a merchant in his little village. But look at how beautiful it is now. But the reason he wanted this specific house in the background is the first centralized school in the whole country, which Mr. Miner gave to this village in 1916, and the school had two swimming pools, one for boys and one for girls. And this was his favorite chair. Here's Aunt Holden and Uncle John seated, and that's Mr. Miner standing there. And on this wall we have Mrs. Miner, the upper one, and the three sisters never married, and they're also in the mausoleum with him in this Riverside Cemetery, and the little boy. And here she is when she's a little younger. She lovely. She's a pretty woman. And there's Mr. Miner's mother and dad, graveside. And here she's with a corset on. Now, these things were given to me the same time the jacket. These were Mr. Miner's clothes brushes. They're all sterling. And this is called your silver overlay. It's still done in Europe. I don't think it's done in the United States anymore, is it? And there she's with her little doll. Look at the beautiful books he had. Books on Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. They were Presbyterians. Did you ever see them? On this wall we have George Washington, the father of our country, and we'll turn around and we have McDonough on that wall there. And here we here we have the Ethan Allen boys, Fort Ticonderoga. Then we'll walk into the side entrance. On this wall we have Daniel Webster, but notice the frame. It's a rosewood frame. And on this floor we have an umbrella stand. It's all beadwork. You turn around. We have your Victorian mirror. This Heppel white table is lovely too, and your brass candelabra. Mrs. Barzinski, we've enjoyed our trip through the museum. Mar it's a marvelous trip. We've all enjoyed it. I'm wondering, how do you manage to finance it, such a beautiful place? Well, Mrs. Minor left a trust when she passed away in 1950, but we have a contribution now, but we don't have any admission charge. And I take people whenever they come. I don't have a specific time I give a tour. You never have to call. Do you, uh, do you have any help? Do you keep everything so beautifully arranged? And I have the one girl that comes on a Wednesday, that's all. I do all the rest and I do all the yard work here and I just love it. You can, see, you can see it's a labor of love. Making me young, stay young. Mm -hmm. Work. Certainly, we walk through the past. It's been a very interesting day, and I thank you so much. I want to thank you for coming. Enjoy you, all of you. Thank you.